I was born in 1992 in France, the year of the Earth Summit that happened in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil. It was an important year for the environmental cause because this year the United Nations voted the Sustainable Development Agenda goals for the 21st century. It must have been karma because since I was a teenager, I have been fascinated by environmental sciences. Ten years ago, people were sure that science would solve the environmental crisis. So wanting to do my share, I decided to become an engineer to provide a technical solution to a technical problem. Well, today I would like to share with you my views about sustainability, bringing in the engineering point of view. In 2015, I moved to, I moved to Porto Alegre in Brazil to become an environmental engineer. I wanted to start my adult life in a young country that I thought would not repeat Europe's failures. A young country, and a country where nature is still wild. I must say Brazil is an amazing place with wonderful people, culture, and amazing landscapes. However, one thing surprised me, that in one of the most unequal countries in the world, material possession means social status. Brazilians see Europe's wealth as a success they want to achieve as well, and this oftentimes means access to mass consumption. On the other side of the Atlantic, consumerism is the norm as well, even in Denmark, one of the most sustainable countries in the world today. Did you know that last year, each Dane dumped 25 kilos on average of electronic waste? 25 kilos is about the weight of a cement bag per person. So it is absolutely unsustainable. We all are unsustainable because of our accumulation mania. And we know very well what are the consequences of it because we hear about that all day long, every day. Climate change, biodiversity depletion, poverty, inequality. I will not extend. We should all feel concerned about that. Rich countries, because they have a historical responsibility and they still are the main contributors. And developing countries should be concerned as well because the majority of this destruction I talked about is happening in their backyard. So, I think that in, for a sustainable world to happen, we have to consider the fundamental needs of people. Of course, we should stop over-consuming, but we are not done with the issue saying that. Because, because people still have to have access to food, housing, sanitation, health. And doing this in a sustainable way seems to me necessary to achieve a sustainable world. But this is not as straightforward as it may seem. Because when I go to the supermarket, I see a wide variety of products, all claiming to be sustainable in their own way. Like you have the organic product, the natural product, the recyclable product, the recycled product, the green energy product. It is completely confusing. What is the best option for the environment? I myself can stay in front of the washing powders, wondering from for some time, do I opt for the concentrate that is supposed to be more efficient, or do I opt for the green washing powder, which is supposed to be less harmful for the environment? But well, I know I have to wash my clothes twice. Okay, I understood something very important at that point, that sustainability, <coughs> is not completely a technical problem. It is also about decision making. Like if we have limited resources, what do we want to spend our resources for? And if whatever we do, we have some kind of environmental impact, 
what is the acceptable level of environmental impact? Well, I understood I needed to go back to school at this point, really, to learn better how to measure sustainability to support decision. And this is how I arrived here in Fredericksburg, Denmark. What I've learned so far is that there are methodologies that allow us to take better decisions for the environment. And this is good news. We should highlight that because it is not as frequent uh, to have good news in a sustainability talk nowadays. So I believe that life cycle analysis is one of these tools. It is very powerful because with life cycle analysis, you consider the full life cycle of the products, which means the raw material that you extracted to build it, the manufacture, the use phase, the disposal or the recycling. And during this life cycle, what are the environmental impacts, positive or negative, that can occur before you take a decision about what is better? And sometimes it can be challenging to measure sustainability because we have to question our beliefs. Let's see with an example how it goes. Who thinks in the room that electric cars are better for climate change compared to conventional cars? Please raise your hand. Thank you. About 30%. Well, let's see. If you look at the map, you will see in orange the country where this assumption is actually true. Countries like Norway or Brazil. Because the electricity that is used to fuel the car comes from hydropower in these countries. And hydropower emits little greenhouse effect gases and consequently has little contribution to climate change. But you see on the map that there are blue countries where the opposite conclusion is true. Countries like USA or China that are, by the way, the largest markets for electric vehicles today. This because in these countries, the electricity relies heavily on fossil fuels and have high environmental impacts, principally on climate change. So, what we see with this example is that we have to measure sustainability before knowing what is actually best, the best option. And accordingly to the context, sustainability is all about the context. Well, we are pretty familiar with climate change, environmental impact, and some of us may even feel anxious with the temperature rise increase provision for 2050. But there are some other kind of environmental impacts that happen here and now and deserve our attention. Like mining impacts. The batteries from the electric cars are made among other materials by metals that are mined through very high environmental impact mining processes. For you to have an idea, a mine is like a vast dead land with no animal, no forest, and the soil and water will be contaminated for decades, even after the mine closes. And on the top of this regular operational impact that, that will happen, you have a technological risk. Brazilians know what it means, because in 2015, a mining dam broke down in Mariana. The mud wiped away the city, killed people, and poisoned the river. This tragedy happened again in 2018 in Brumadinho, a nearby city. So it is very important that talking about sustainability, we broaden our perspective and consider all kinds of environmental impact that can occur. Not only climate change, even if it is important. Well, I know electric cars are a controversial topic and uh, it is legitimate to ask ourselves, is it even possible to consume sustainably? Well, one has to hope for something and I really think it is. And um, next time you go to supermarket to do so, you can ask yourself three questions. First, 
do I actually need this? This may be the most important question. Remember the 25 kilos. Then, what is the past, the present, and the future life of my product? Taking the life cycle perspective. And then, what happens to the environment as a consequence? I am sure with these three questions and maybe a little bit of research at home, you will be able to make better decisions for the environment 80% of the time. Now, sustainable consumption and sustainable production are the two faces of the same coin. So let's flip the coin and look at the production perspective. Whatever you do in life, you may contribute to the production of something. And bringing in life cycle thinking, you may be able to do as sustainably as possible what you were doing before. But you could do even better. You can design products and processes that are meant to be sustainable since the beginning. And this is what we want. Some people think that sustainable consumption will be the driver for sustainable production shift to happen. This may be true only if the consumer has the right information. This is why we should, should all ask, demand transparency from companies, from governments. It is not any more acceptable that sustainability claims are not backed by proofs and facts. Okay, life cycle thinking at the very end tells us one simple thing, that ecosystems connect together natures, nature and humans. This feeling of unity, the astronauts felt it when they saw the, for the first time the Earth from outer space, and they called it the overview effect. These were the words of Michael Collins when he came back from Apollo 11 mission. The thing that surprised me was that the Earth projected an air of fragility. I had a feeling it is tiny, it is shiny, it is beautiful, it is home and it is fragile. Thank you.